report to order. This is going to be maybe the shortest meeting uh, in, uh, we've had since we've been here. Um, uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Commissioner Brian Booth if he would say the invocation for us. Lord, as we come before you tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, watch over this court. And we make all the right decisions, dear Heavenly Father. And watch over us with this virus, dear Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, we know it's all in your hands, God. And if you will, Lord, just take this virus away from this whole country, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like, uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Judge Jones? Present. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. We have a quorum and we're ready to proceed. I'd like to ask Commissioner Ronnie Robertson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the court meeting on March 23rd, 2020. Is there a motion? motion? We have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tackett. Any question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item is acknowledgement of the receipt of the Pike County Cooperative Extension Service 2020-2021 budget. Is there a motion to acknowledge? Motion. A motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Booth. Any other question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item on the agenda is approval for lease PRO 4387 for July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2021 with the Finance Administration Cabinet, Department for Facilities and Support Services for property located at 25-230 U.S. Highway 119 North. This is a Belfry Courthouse uh, where uh, Department of Community-Based Services, I believe, or Cabinet for Health and Family Services has had an office. They've never paid rent. And, you know, the state pays rent to a lot of other agencies, and, and uh, we have asked them to pay rent. It's, you know, they're, we're paying upkeep and the utilities on a building. So we have negotiated a lease of uh, $10 per square foot. We consulted with some local realtors about an appropriate rate. Uh, and we have on, uh, reached an agreement with uh, the state, which will pay the county $9,990 a year in rent. It's money we've never had before. That'll help uh, with something. So is there a motion to approve lease PRO 4387 as previously stated? We have a motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Booth. Any question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. And Mr. King, we've got a, a lease here. Would you just like to brief us on this? And I'm not sure where Mr. Maynard's at um, because we discussed with this lease, we required to maintain $5 million in coverage on this thing. And I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look at the policy to see what we're uh, we're dealing with. We have, Judge. I just took a look at this. This is for the uh, McCoy Well site, and apparently the county um, leases a parking lot to facilitate visitors to that uh, to that site. And the lease itself looks fine, but the one provision that jumped out to me in review was let me get you the number here. $5 million a year. Yeah, there's a $5 million provision for under insurance. It requires us to maintain $5 million in liability insurance, and that would seem excessive to me for a parking lot. Uh, I don't know what the premium difference is going to be in what we probably ought to have in $5 million, but in the shape the county's in, if it saves us any money, it's probably something we should explore. Is this a, is this a, is this a renewal of an existing lease? Yeah. Yes. That's what I thought. This was done back several years ago to have – so is this the same lease that's been in effect? I think so. For every year. Justin, maybe you can answer this. This lease requires the county to maintain $5 million in liability coverage on a parking lot. It's been enforced for some time. Do you know if our current limits comply with that? Okay. So is there a motion to, um, it's still excessive. I've never seen that before, but okay. Well, Nothing surprises me when you're Pike County Judge Executive. Just trust me. It's uh, it's it's nothing surprises me. Um, is there a motion to approve 
the renewal of this lease for property to be used for parking in the McCoy well site and authorization to pay $100 per month beginning on April 15th, 2020 and continuing on the 15th uh, of the month for thereafter. Um, it's a one year lease. So motion by Commissioner Booth, is there a second? Uh, there's a second by Commissioner Robertson. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tack? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Uh, the next item, Mr. Keene, if you'll stay right there, is the first reading of a proposed amendment to Section 472. And before you present that, let me explain to you uh, why we're doing here. This will basically uh, eliminate the two week notice for layoffs. Uh, that's not to say there's going to be layoffs. It's not going to be to say that there's not. And we fully intend to give uh, at least two weeks notice to employees who may be subject to a layoff. However, given that we're in a state of emergency, we have no idea how long the economy is going to be shut down. We have no idea what we may have to deal with in terms of, um, you know, if we had a uh, massive outbreak of COVID-19 and we needed to send our employees home uh, for their own safety or the safety of others, uh, we may not have two weeks to wait. It may be a decision that we have to make uh, on a rapid basis. So uh, we would uh, suggest amending the code to remove the two week notice uh, requirement. And, um, but again, we fully expect to give ample notice in the event that there would be a workforce reduction. So with that being said, Mr. King, would you please give the first reading? Section two of 472 currently reads subsection two, after court approval, the employee will be given a two week written notice by his or her department supervisor to lay off. If adopted in the amended form, it would now read after court approval, the employee will be given a written notice by his or her department supervisor to lay off. As you said, just the two week uh, written provision will be removed. And this can be voted on in a, uh, in a week should the court decide to adopt it. Okay. So no, we'll, this will be on the agenda for the next meeting. All right, uh, next item is a motion to approve the uh, uh, Pike County Commissioner's recommended uh, road maintenance list. We had approved a uh, motion last week, but we've got some additional items on this. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Roberts. Any other question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Um, we have the next item before we, uh, Mr. Stacey, you have any business? Okay. Before we discuss going into executive session, there is a list uh, in your packets of the equipment that is down, that is in for work at the uh, road maintenance garage. Looks like you have road lot five, um, the backhoes down. There's a whole bunch of equipment down. It's, it's uh, two full pages and two partial pages full. It's, it's, it's a lot of uh, pieces of equipment, one, uh, judge, my excavator's down and my backhoe's down. Is the spare ones down too? We've got better, nearly 50 pieces of equipment. If, if this stuff is all still down, it's nearly 50 pieces of equipment. And it just speaks volumes about the, the junk that we inherited. I'm just being blunt about it. You've got um, backhoe down. You've got um, Packard, two Packer, a 32 yard Packer, it looks like. You've got um, another backhoe down. I mean, it's just so much that now, of course, some of these issues may be the same piece of equipment. They don't look, it is. I don't, but it's, some of this stuff has multiple problems with it. Loaders, backhoes. Let's see. 
Which one? Is it the same one? Okay, so it may not be that many. Let me count these up. That's what happens when you don't wear your glasses. Two, Looks like about 28 pieces of equipment and vehicles. So that's still excessive and it shows what air problems are. Um, Judge Hickman, do you want to go over that capital plan real quick on the facilities that we've got? Because I'm going to be working on the budget this week and next week. Uh, to have that to the court. My plan is to present my proposed budget to the court uh, at the next court meeting, if possible. If not, I'll have it to you in any event by May 1st. Um, would you just run through that real quick? I know you've worked extremely hard on it, and I want to personally thank you for everything that you've done because this job is hard enough. There's no one person can do this job. I, I would tell that to anybody. And you've worked really hard with all our staff putting this together on the capital plan. Would you just run through that real quick with us if you don't care? No, thank you, Judge. I've got copies for the court. Uh, we were running uh, right to the edge here for the meeting. Uh, we have... Have you got uh, the copies with you there? I do. Can, you, can we pass those out or if you'll yeah. pass them, I'll pass them down. Sure. And then we can pass the hand sanitizer back too. So, so let me begin while you're, before you do this and just say that uh, we found out today, I just had a text from the, the uh, health department, 147 new cases in Kentucky and seven deaths. That brings the total in Kentucky to uh, 1,155 total cases and 65 deaths. And that is a lot higher um, than the national average in terms of the mortality rate. Um, that's almost, a, that's a little over a five and a half percent um, mortality rate in Kentucky. And that's probably twice or close to twice what the national average is. And that clearly, in my mind, shows why it's important that we continue, continue to do social distancing. As you can see, we have a limited number of people in the courtroom, uh, a lot fewer than we normally do. We're maintaining the social distancing. We're encouraging everyone to please don't go out unless you have to. And if you do, six feet apart, good hygiene, hand washing, hand sanitizers, and use common sense because if the statewide death rate is about five and a half, five point six percent, it would be substantially higher here with our elderly population and our population that have a lot of pre-existing medical problems. So again, uh, we've only had one diagnosed case in Pike County. We want to keep it that way. We, we do not want to see an outbreak of this disease here. The sooner that we can contain this nationally, the sooner we can all get back to well, maybe a new normal, but a, a normal quality of life. And I want to thank the health department. I want to thank all of our first responders and our health care providers who've worked so hard on this. I want to thank all the court staff and especially the solid waste crews who have been working extremely hard to continue uh, making sure that the trash is picked up. So with that being said, Judge Hickman, is, uh, you have the floor, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> this is nearly a finished product. Uh, their current total uh, for operation, operational capital is 3648000 If you add the $5.5 million uh, for the landfill expansion and construction to this capital list, then you top out at about $9.1 or $2 million. Uh, this is considerably less than, than where we started. Uh, I'll have to give the staff credit. Uh, we started with a list that had a lot more on this uh, than where we are now. And what um, happened here was just a lack of funding. So we have cut and trimmed and tried to categorize everything into what is considered to be the absolute most urgent uh, things by uh, department that's needed uh, for the county. So the road department is uh, in right now at about a million seven fifty nine. 
uh, public works is in at approximately uh, 725,000. You have your 5.5 million for landfill, landfill expansion, and uh, we have about a million 163 uh, still in need for uh, solid waste. So these are not accurately spread yet across the five-year period. Uh, we're getting close. Uh, I'm actually at the point now where I need some direction from the court. So we'll work with the court to polish this off and get it parked into the uh, one through five year categories where we need it. Um, and once again, the demands uh, on the part of all the supervisors uh, far exceed our ability to actually purchase it. So we had to really bake this down to a point where uh, it's just the essential stuff. We don't have everything, everything pretty much is in here. We're solid waste, public works, the road department. Um, of course, we don't have anything on the jail in here, correct? That's correct. And we know that there's gonna to have to be some things done over there. The total, again, without glasses, is 3.648 million, excluding five and a half million for the landfill That's expansion. correct, yeah. So if we factor in the landfill expansion, we're uh, 9.15 million. That's correct. So just so the public will understand, and I think this is very important, when this court came in office, there was no money set aside for your landfill expansion, which we know we've already spent close to 300,000 on the permit application with another five and a half million to go. There was no money set aside for that. We know there's a shortfall if the landfill were to close in terms of the escrow account. Um, we also know that there was no money set aside for any of these public buildings. And I'm gonna just, die, just talk about that. And I'm sure the members of the court wanna, wanna address this. I had a lady call me today and want to talk about the closure of one senior citizen center. She said, I understand. She said, I understand that that's not your decision, but she said, I understand that the financial problems. When you go from 10 to 12 million a year in coal mineral severance to somewhere around 1.5, 1.6 million this year, we will know at the end of this month about where we're gonna be. We're already 300 and some thousand short on coal severance this year, uh, coal and mineral. We only budgeted 2.1 million. We figure that is gonna come in somewhere around 500,000 short, and we know that it's gonna be even less than that next year because of the trend, and we know what the state budget has appropriated for coal severance next year. Um, at the same time, our costs are going up. You're gonna hear you know, our health insurance, liability, workers' comp, the, the premium increase is about 345,000, and we're still working to see if we can get that down. We're still working with our agents on that. And I'm gonna go over that with you in a moment. But if you think about, if the public's watching this and they think about how many community buildings, how many parks, how many playgrounds, swimming pools, public golf course, fire departments that we not only uh, put over 460,000 in money right out of our budget to help subsidize, we pay all the fire department's insurance, we help them with maintenance on their buildings, 600,000 out of the budget for senior citizen centers every year. That was all doable, a million dollars a year, and Frank, you can correct me if I'm wrong on any of these numbers because you've been here a long time, but a million dollars a year in coal severance going into the solid waste program to subsidize it, to keep the rates low so people could get reelected, keep the garbage rates at $10, nobody gets upset. But you think about how absurd that was to subsidize solid waste with coal severance tax money intended for infrastructure like water and sewer, industrial parks, technology centers, things that would create jobs when coal was no longer the mainstay of our economy. They didn't invest in that. They invested in community buildings and parks. Now we have over 100 pieces of property that we're responsible for maintaining. I think it's closer to 110, is that correct? That's correct. 110 roughly properties that this court has to maintain. And if you're watching this, and you know how hard it is to maintain your house, 110 pieces of property, heat cool, most of them, 
cut grass, insure, upkeep, and not one penny was ever set aside for it. Is that true, Frankie? Was there any money ever set aside for that? Any kind of trust fund or anything? So now this court is having to make some hard decisions with almost no coal severance tax in the middle of a pandemic when we know that we're going to have a substantial hit to our um, occupational net profit tax. This is a really bad situation. It has been made. It was bad before the pandemic, and I think it'll be even worse before it's over. So we've got to find a way to figure out what we can afford to spend in this first year. Now, we had a $400,000 bond paid off last year. A portion of that money will have to be used, if not all that money that was, had been budgeted for years, will have to be used to implement this capital plan. And it is a bare bones capital plan, I might add. There are a lot of other needs that are not included on this. So the members have this before the next meeting. I'd ask that each one of you submit or get with Judge Hickman. Take some time and let's go over this because we've got to prioritize what we need for road work, for road equipment, solid waste equipment uh, in our facilities that we need to include in the next budget. And uh, again, there's no money set aside for that. It's going to have to come right out of our budget and we're going to have to find a way to pay for that. Uh, but we can't keep doing road work when you've got, and we're just throwing good money after bad when you've got, you know, 30 vehicles and pieces of equipment in the road lot every time we turn around. So with that being said, Judge, do you have anything else you'd like to add on this? Well, I, I would. You, if you'll remember back, Judge, we were looking at almost $15 million at one point. So it is bare bones compared to where we were. And I would also ask the court to notice that in public works, that has not been spread across the five years yet. But it's highly unlikely that we will be able to do uh, $872,000 in capital purchases in one year. There's so no some way. of that has there's, to move. There's no way. It has to move. There's, there's no way, not with the financial constraints we have. Absolutely impossible. And it is incumbent, in my opinion, on this court that we can't let our buildings just fall apart. We can't let roofs leak and ruin room buildings we have electrical issues we have all kinds of major issues that we you know we've talked about a chiller we got to put a new chiller in the ac unit at the jail it's a hundred thousand dollars people don't realize what it costs phone systems got to be put here in the courthouse we're buying parts for our phone system off of ebay that's correct i mean people don't realize this is a 20 some year old phone system that they don't make parts for any longer pretty soon you're going to be able to find parts for it and we cannot have a system where our County Attorney's Office, or uh, PVA's office, uh, all the offices are here, Apple Red, Solid Waste. Sheriff's Office is the most important. We can't have the Sheriff's Office phone go down. And it's something we're gonna have to address. So would y'all like to address this? Any of those issues? Commissioner Robertson, I know you're, you're wanting to talk to say something. I can tell the look on your face. No, I, I just think a lot of the citizens out there don't know what we inherited. Um, we have stuff that stays broke every week. We can't pick your garbage up because we've got trucks broke down. Uh, We're fixing that. Yes, we are. We're fixing that. But, yes, we are. Uh, I think we'll, you know, if just be patient with us another six months and the garbage will turn around considerable. Uh, the other problems we look at, I mean, we get one problem fixed and then we got another one hitting us in the face every day. So I just hope the taxpayers out there and the residents of the county will just be patient with us. We're working hard for you and uh, just give us a little more time and I think you'll see a turnaround. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Booth, you have anything? Judge, I guess kind of about what Ronnie said. Uh, I know we got equipment breaking down in the road department. It's in like every time you turn around, but uh, it's just going to take time to fix it. We can't fix it overnight. It's just going to—it's going to take a little while to get everything lined out. I do think that this court has made a lot of progress. I think we've addressed a lot of problems. They've not been easy solutions. They've not always been popular, but I think we've been able to address a lot of 
every day Judge Hickman and I are here, uh, we're coming up on problems that we never anticipated. And I think it's fair to say that we've handled most of those issues. Um, nobody that's ever sat in these seats in the last hundred years has had to deal with this county going through a pandemic. And the last time that we went through a pandemic, my great grandmother died when my grandfather was a little boy from the Spanish flu. Um, I think he was about six years old. So to put that in perspective, how long ago that's been, we've not had to deal with this. And we know that a lot of people are working hard on it. We know it's gonna have an impact on us. But again, it was bad before that uh, came about. And we have a plan in place and it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be popular, but if we follow our plan, I think we can get, our, get the county straightened out and at least on stable footing where we can guarantee the provision of basic services. And I think at the end of this term, if we can say that we've stabilized the finances and got a, a county government structure that we can fund and live with, it's not gonna be what people can have expected in the past, but you also don't have, uh, we've lost 10, $11 million roughly in coal severance and mineral severance, plus the single county money was another six, seven, million dollars a year that the legislature was putting in for infrastructure you're looking close to a uh, 17 18 million dollar hit over the last 20 years so that's a pretty tough situation mr tackett you have anything you'd like to all right so is there a need for executive session tonight I don't think we do because we're going to be back here in two weeks. Uh, do we? Let's do this. We do have a personnel matter that we can address rather quickly. Or would you prefer we do the some of those personnel issues? Would you think we would just wait to the next court meeting? Judge Hickman, what do you think? I could see the need for maybe about a five or 10 minute for that for one topic. We, we've got some specific personnel matters we do need to discuss uh, at some point. So Mr. King, we, before we do that, let me just tell you in your packet is the loss, the population and claims that the court has from our health insurance carrier. And if you'll flip into that, I'm just run through it real, with you real quick because the public needs to hear this. They're absolutely entitled to hear this. There are 231 uh, members, employees, and dependents in this report. Now, that's not how many employees we have. I assume, Justin, that would be the number of employees that we've had throughout the policy period. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is it 231? Yes. Okay. So some of those employees we're reimbursed for, like the airport board, 911 AOC Pike County Tourism. So not all of those are fiscal court employees, but here's the issue. So far, and this was as of April 4th, our premium was about what was the premium? Do you have that there in front of you, Justin? Or roughly? What was what was the premium for this policy? The total premium was about $1.597 million. Okay. So it, let's say $1.6 million. They had already spent $1,313,000 with basically a quarter left to go. So um, we know that next year that it's going to have a, a profound impact on our rates next year. And, you know, if you look at it, it lays out the most common diagnoses, it lays out the prescriptions, the most commonly used prescriptions and the cost for those. Um, it gives some historic claims data. So, um, I 
I thought this information would be useful. All right. The other issue is, do you have those insurance policies that we can, for us to go over? Uh, we probably can go ahead. We do have the workers' comp premiums. Do we want to wait to see at the next court meeting if we can get these premiums? Down? I think let's wait to the next court meeting because we've got, I talked to the agent about trying to rework these premiums to see if we can get a little bit better rate. Uh, we can hold off on the package. Uh, I would ask that we go ahead and renew the comp because that's not going to change. Okay. Uh, the liability may, but comp will not. Correct. Can I, can you hand me that please? And then I'll pass this along to the court members. Uh, I didn't, so the, the new uh, premium, the total policy premium uh, for the new policy was a $102,000 increase. Correct. We went from 828205 to the 930. That's so it's a $102,000 increase. With the claims history we have, and that's some information that he can share with, with you all, when you, if you want to just go talk to him about that. As you know, we had a significant claim last year. We're looking into some things that we think raise some questions, and, and we'll brief the public and the court on that at the appropriate time. But the renewal on this premium for Brick Street for the workers' comp is $930,993. So uh, is there a motion to renew the county's workers' comp coverage with Brick Street through Assured Partners uh, NLLLC as the agent for $930,993? We have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Robertson. I'm passing that around. I'm not going to call for a vote on that until you all have had an opportunity to review that. Um, You don't have any questions uh, for, for Justin or Judge Hickman? Sorry. There's no other questions. We have a motion and a second. Uh, no other questions. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Justin. All right. Mr. King, would you please instruct the uh, court on <laughs> entry into executive session? I would also ask you just to briefly. Uh, it bring the court up to speed on the RCC Big Show litigation uh, while we're in executive session. In order to, uh, we need a motion uh, to enter executive session as authorized by KRS 61810 subsection F uh, to discuss specific personnel matters. Uh, do you want me to discuss the RCC Big Show yes. after executive session or? In executive session. Okay. And then we also need a, under subsection C to discuss pending litigation. All right. So is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Booth. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. We are uh, in recess for executive session and we'll return on call of the chair. Before we, uh, anything else, is there a motion to adjourn from executive session? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Tackett. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Um, 
we don't have a need for department supervisors comments mr king you have anything else all right judge hickman anything commissioner robertson district one i just want all the citizens of pike county to try to uh, listen to all the advice that the judge and the health department and everybody's gave us in this area and let's try to keep this virus uh, we don't want any of it so please take this serious and and do what you can to protect yourself and your family members and all that around you because this is really a serious problem thank you thank you Commissioner Tackett uh, judge uh, just back this a little bit. Uh, me and Fabian's out today looking at some roads uh, out in District Two, and uh, and we've had some complaints. Uh, and I just asked the people to at least give us time to let the blacktop plants open up. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's hard to fix problems when they're not making no blacktop. Um, and we will be getting on those uh, on the on the roads and getting back to uh, fixing some potholes and. Uh, it's just going to take some time. You know, we, we can't do it if they're not making it. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is thank the uh, employees in Solid Waste and thank their families for, you know, being back them and being with them. And, you know, just I ask them to be safe too, uh, not only with the public, but our employees at this county. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Booth. Uh, Judge, I just want to brag on the landfill a little bit tonight. Uh, Larry had an inspection uh, into March, and the uh, inspector come up on the landfill there, and him and Larry went out and looked at it, and uh, he come back, uh, everything was in good compliance, everything looked good, uh, zero violations at the time, so uh, he was tickled with how everything looked at the landfill, and that's what, I think they've been doing an outstanding job up at the landfill, if you just seen it year ago and compared to what it looks like now i mean them guys really worked hard up there so i just want to brag on them a little bit tonight and also i'm like jason uh, they need to uh kind of our solid waste workers is picking up all this trash during this time you know there are a lot of health hazards there and stuff and all so uh i like to have them guys remember tonight and uh, that's about, I guess that's all I have tonight, judges. Uh, just remember all our employees and let's get through this virus. It is a serious problem and all, uh, that's all I've got. Thanks, I just wanna to touch on a couple of things. First and foremost, we've had people uh, complaining because at some of the stations, transfer stations at Robinson Creek's only open two hours a day. And they're complaining because you know, there's not people there. Well, first of all, to have somebody sit there requires money. It's money that the taxpayers were already having to make cuts. We're likely to have to make substantial cuts. It's not possible to put somebody there or economically feasible to put somebody there all day. And we've been having our solid waste enforcement officer there two hours a day. And we're looking at putting some dumpsters outside the gate. And we're, we're, we should have that done in the next several days. And we've tried to put some dumpsters up around the county, but let me say this. We've had a problem. It's just like at Christmas time when we put these dumpsters out for the public at no cost. When they're full, people will throw garbage on top of them until it falls off and they'll stack it beside of them. If there is a dumpster and it is full, don't put anything out beside of it because somebody has to clean up that mess. And it still takes manpower to haul that material to the landfill. If we try this and people make messes and they keep piling it up and our workers that are already working late every night, they're struggling to get these routes done with reduced manpower, I will have the boxes pulled in. We simply, it's not fair to the people that has to clean it up for people just to pile it so high or beside these dumpsters that somebody else has to clean it up. The men in the Pike County Solid Waste Department are public servants. They are not going to be made to clean up garbage and piles of it. They're just piled up beside these dumpsters. We're not going to do that. 
Now, we've had some complaints. I'm going to talk about what Commissioner Tackett talked about. The blacktop plants, I'm not even sure that they're open back up yet. We're in the middle of a national emergency, a state emergency, and an emergency that's been declared here in the county. And we have people complaining it's the first week of April, the asphalt plants are not open, they're complaining about potholes. I'm not sure what people expect us to, pa to patch them with. Now, we've talked enough, and I'm gonna continue to talk about people wanting to go on Facebook and make criticism or complaints until you sit in one of these seats and you've looked at the finances and you understand the actual facts that we're having to deal with then you really need, if you have a question or complaint, call and let us know. But going on Facebook's not going to get it fixed because there's a chance nobody's going to see it. It just stirs people up for no reason. And quite candidly, it really, really hurts the morale of our road crews. You know, if there's a problem with county government and all people want to do is complain, I always believe if you don't have a solution, don't make a complaint. If you can't come up with a way to do it better, don't offer your criticism. And, you know, uh, if we make a mistake, we'll address it. If an employee of the county makes a mistake, we'll address it. This court has proven that. But don't just make posts on Facebook. It, it, you know, it's really, really, it's not my job to, to police Facebook. It's not any of these men's job to police Facebook. It's not any of our staff's job to stay on Facebook to see what your problems may be. We have phone numbers. We have email. Call the offices. If you have a complaint, we, we have a complaint process. It goes to the appropriate person. I get a copy. Judge Hickman gets a copy. The commissioner gets a copy. And it goes, if it's a road problem, it goes to Mr. Little. If it's a solid waste problem, it goes to Mr. Morley. So we will address the problems, but I can assure you by simply posting on Facebook, it will not get the issue addressed because the chances of us being aware of it are slim to none. Now, we've got some major issues that we're gonna take up at the next court meeting in two weeks from today. Uh, we're going to ha have hopefully have the budget uh, ready to go from my office to the commissioners, or at least close to it. I've asked the commissioners to get with Judge Hickman to help finalize their opinions on the capital plan. Uh, this is a very austere budget. Um, we no longer have uh, millions and millions of dollars of coal severance tax to, to, to dabble here and dabble there and to, to do favors for people or to prop up county government. We're having to live within our means and we're gonna to continue to do that. We're gonna to try to hold taxes now. This court did not raise your taxes. And I think that's important for people to realize. Uh, by not taking the compensating grade, it cost the court 240,000 this year and will every year in the future. So those are my comments. In closing, please continue to adhere to the CDC guidelines uh, in Governor Bashir's orders and the executive orders that I've issued. If you're running a business and you're doing something in violation of those orders and we find out about it, the health department will take appropriate action. We cannot afford with the aging population and the sick people we have in this area, we cannot afford to have this pandemic uh, run rampant in this area. We're very blessed. We have been very blessed to only have one case in Pike County. And I hope and pray that's the only case we have. But if there's any change, the court will have a press conference to update the public. Uh, if you're sick, if you're having symptoms, please call your doctor or the health department because it's important that if you start developing these symptoms that you protect the people around you from catching it. And if you have questions, the health department can answer those. So with that being said, I'd like to ask Commissioner Booth for the benediction and then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Lord, as we come before you again tonight, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, watch over our county, Father, and all this virus that's come upon our land, dear Heavenly Father, and Lord, just watch over the country as a whole, dear Heavenly Father. You know that you can take this virus away from us, the spices that come upon us, dear Heavenly Father, and go with us, Lord, until we meet again, and that, Lord, that we make all the right decisions that we make for this county, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. 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 Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second?
Second by Commissioner Robertson. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. We are adjourned.